Oklahoma picked up a grad transfer on the offensive line. We're going to talk about it. And all that's coming up after the bumper. What do you mean oh. you don't subscribe to my son's YouTube channel? Mama, no! Just snap the damn ball, RJ. What's up, kid folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step milk. Consider it in the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always OU related, college football related, sports related. We have a good time. And today, we're going to talk about the offensive line grad transfer commit Oklahoma picked up on Sunday. His name is RJ Proctor. He puts periods between his name, I do not mind, get that straight. In RJ Proctor, you're getting a guy who had his choice of Texas, Penn State, Ohio State, Oklahoma, among others as a potential landing spot for his services in his final year of eligibility to play college football. He's coming from Bronco Mendenhall's Virginia football program, where they went 8-5 last year. And if you watch his tape, you see a guy playing left guard who knows how to get onto a block, get off a block, get to the next level. He's really good when you're talking about run blocking. The thing that I want to know is, is he actually going to play guard at Oklahoma? In Marquise Hayes and Tyrus Robinson, you seem to have guys that are next men up next to Creed Humphrey when he comes back from injury over the summer and in the preseason camp. And you don't know what you have on the offensive line at offensive tackle either. So where R.J. Proctor fits is basically anywhere but center. And I think that's the only spot on this 2019 offensive line we can say is tied up. Now, Sooner fans will want to know, when is R.J. Proctor expected to land at Oklahoma. It is not during spring ball. So still going through spring ball with a brand new inexperienced offensive line. I still think that's a blessing in disguise because as Lincoln Riley pointed out when talking about Creed Humphrey, you have a bunch of guys around him who might be looking at him as some sort of crutch because he knows all the calls. He knows what everybody else is supposed to be doing. And you really want to get a good read on what your offensive linemen know and what they've been studying for. And then you get to get a hard look at what they do well. Famously, Cody Ford is among three Sooners in this 2019 draft class who's being projected to go in the first round. This is a guy, didn't have a bunch of starts, played the guard position before Bill Beatonbo moved him to right tackle. And that is where he is projected to be a first round draft pick. There is nothing to say RJ Proctor can't do the same. He has a size six foot four and 300 plus pounds, and he's got good feet, and he plays the game angrily. That's the thing that jumps out on the tape. He finishes blocks. Now, you're getting some guys to come in that can help you on the offensive line, particularly EJ Indomo Ogar, who I expect to compete for that second position behind Creed Humphrey as the next man up at center. But again, RJ Proctor gets here in the summer. You'll get Creed Humphrey back. You'll probably get that guy to work right away. Try to figure out where you're going to put your left tackle, who's going to be your right tackle, so forth, so on. Build your line from the outside in toward Creed Humphrey. The other thing I find interesting about the R.J. Proctor commit is that it seemed Oklahoma was just not going to get a grad transfer commit on that offensive line. It had been a number of guys that OU was in the running for that just did not end up here even going back to last year with Calvin Anderson, a grad transfer from Rice, choosing Texas over Oklahoma. You had another guy who's transferring from Butler, ends up in Miami, and so forth and so on. I'm so excited to know that somebody bought into what Bill Bedenboe has been doing over the last several years at Oklahoma, which is taking guys with limited talent or with peak talent and turning them into the kind of guys that get to a second contract in the league. We're talking about a guy like Orlando Brown, who wasn't that highly sought after, who came in with not the best talent, but worked his behind off and became a unanimous All-American, one of the best left tackles to come through here in recent memory. All Bill Beatonbo does is take his offensive linemen, put them in the NFL, and you would think that'd be an easy sell. But it hasn't turned out to be. Maybe guys don't want to get coached the way that Bill Beatonbo has to coach him to get them right. That is not R.J. Proctor. Yes, he said he's transferring to Oklahoma because he wants to win, and he wants to win a lot. Five losses in a season at Oklahoma, eh, that ain't going to sit well with anybody. I guess you can get away with that at Virginia, but you can't get away with that in Norman. And he said, I want to be coached well and coached hard. He is looking forward 
to the challenge that Bill Beatonbow will bring to him day in and day out as soon as he gets to campus in May. But as we've seen before, you got to wait for the guy to get on campus. You got to wait for the guy to actually enroll in classes before you can count your eggs, see your chickens hatch. Look, I'm excited about that commit. I'm excited about getting this offensive line right. And you wanted someone with some experience, not named Creed Humphrey, to show up to try to help put together what is going to be an inexperienced and fresh offensive line for a guy like Jalen Hurts, who might have to run for his life for the first few games, especially leading up to Texas as you look at the schedule. Houston, South Dakota, UCLA, Texas Tech, Kansas, and then I believe Texas is the way that the 2019 schedule lays out. So you're able to build up to that game. It's what you're looking for. It's what you want. But again, this offensive line, it's going to need some help. The only things I looked at when I was watching the film of R.J. Proctor in preparation for this video is his quarterback was on the ground a lot. And it wasn't his doing. His guy was usually blowing off the ball or he had chipped his guy, got to the next level, and it was okay. But I'm sure that he was frustrated to know that he was doing his job and his quarterback is still on the ground, pounding his hand on the dirt, going, someone protect me. Now, I found it interesting that he was looking to go to Florida State as well among the teams that I was mentioning. I think I left Florida State out earlier, but that was a team that was in the running. And I was going, man, uh, nah, because they, that, they, they just going to be the same story for you at Florida State that it was in Virginia. And they got a guy in Alex Hornibrook that also is going to get his lunch eaten because they could not protect the last quarterback they had, DeAndre Francois, which was, for many people, one of the better quarterbacks in college football up until last year. Now, he's got a guy that's won a national championship he can block for. He's got a guy, Bill Beatonbow, that knows how to put people into the NFL. And he's got a guy in Creed Humphrey who knows how to call the offensive line. He will have plenty of help. He will have everything that he needs to try to get prepared to make the jump to the next level and get that NFL contract. All right, that's it for me. Deuces.